Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking digital background effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine, FPS 30 and the duration of about 15 seconds. Let's press OK. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and I'm just going to label this me1. It's going to press OK. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called me. Now me is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please download it before continuing on with this tutorial. Once we've got that open, the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the geometry settings and I'm just going to change the size XYZ to XYZ individual. I'm going to bring up the size X to about 3700. And I'm also going to bring up the size Y to 3700. So just enough to fill up the entire composition. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to animate the rotate Y. So I'm going to hold Option on my Mac, Alt on my Windows machine, click that stopwatch, and then I'm going to write the expression time times four. And if you've done that correctly, now you will see it rotate throughout your timeline. Once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the vertices. So I'm just going to drop them down to 20 for the vertices X and 20 for the vertices Y. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go down to the fractal settings and we need to change the amplitude. I'm going to bring that up to about 2500 and I'm also going to drop the frequency to about 80. Now obviously you can't see anything here but if you go down to the shader settings and if you go to the draw settings over here and change it to wireframe now you can see what we're working with. So if you go back and if you want to change any of these values for example the size you can do that so if you want to make it a bit more intricate you can change anything there or if you want to change the vertices as well you know that creates a kind of unique look or you can even drop it down if you like or going into the fractal and changing the amplitude you know you can have a real play around with some of these settings in there as well as the frequency you can get some really cool unique looks if you just play around with some of those settings but anyways i'm just going to leave it like that so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to the evolution options and I'm just going to animate that. So I'm going to hold option on my keyboard and write time times four. And then I'm going to go on the offset X. I'm going to hold option. And then I'm going to write time times five. So now if you've done that correctly, now there will be a little bit more movement that goes along with that Y rotation axis animation. Now, if you want to make that faster or slower, you can change any of those values down there. So now once we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the material settings and we're just going to change the color. So here I am in color hunt and I'm choosing this orange theme. I'm going to be going with these two colors mostly, but I'll be using this for a bit of a gradient later on. So I'm just going to click on that and bring that back into After Effects. So now for my color in, the only other thing I have to do here is I'm just going to go to the line size and I'm just going to increase that to two. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to come to our layers over here. I'm just going to make sure that I click on that layer. Then I'm going to press Command D to duplicate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename that to me to just so they were a little bit organized. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the modes to both screen. And then what I'm going to do is on me to layer, I'm going to change a few things. So I'm going to go down to the material settings. I'm going to change the nudge colors to 15%. Then I'm going to put the lighter orange in there. So I'm going to be choosing this color and then I'm going to be pasting it back into After Effects. Cool. So I've put that in there and I'm also going to change something in the shader settings. So I'm going to open the shader settings and then I'm going to go down to the line size, bring that back down to zero. And then I'm going to play around with some of these options here. So if I change the front fill back wire, you can see how we've got the 
panels which are kind of colored in and if you go to back cull it will just kind of dim that down a little bit so i'm going to stick with that one so the next thing that i need to do is i need to pre-compose both those layers so i'm going to highlight both of them go to layer pre-compose i'm just going to call that me and then i'm also going to change that to screen and then what i need to do is i need to create another new solid this time this is going to be the background and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to search for the effect called gradient ramp and what i want here is i want a radial ramp and then i'm going to swap the colors to make the black at the bottom and then i'm just going to go to color hunt and i'm going to choose this dark orange over here so now that I've pasted that back in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the start and end values. So what you want is just a little bit of orange throughout the first kind of half of your composition. So now once we have that, we need to add a little bit of distortion to our clip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the effect called Turbulent Displace and you can play around with some of these settings if you want it to go really trippy you can increase the amount but i'm going to put it to about let's say 90 and if you want to change the size you can have a play around with those settings so i'm going to drop that down to maybe let's say 40 something like that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold option and hit the stopwatch and we're going to animate this so i'm going to write time times 10. And so now, if you've done that correctly, now you will have this cool kind of trippy digital background going off, but it's not done yet. So what we can do now is we can just uh, kind of dress it all up. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called curves. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a simple s bend just to bring that color down slightly and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another new adjustment layer and i'm going to search for the effect called glow and now obviously with glow just straight out of the box it's a little bit you know too much over there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring some of these values um tame them a bit so i'm going to drop the glow threshold or bring that up to about 80 and the glow radius will bring up slightly maybe we'll put it at around 60 but the glow intensity will bring that down to about 0.6 and so now we've got this cool kind of glow that goes through that composition that's looking pretty cool so now once we have that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to duplicate that glow again by pressing command d and I'm just gonna change some of these settings. So the threshold I'm gonna bring down maybe to about, let's say 40%. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the glow radius to maybe let's say 200. And then I'm gonna bring down the glow intensity to let's say 0.1 or even 0.2. So depending on how much glow you want. So I think that look, that's looking pretty good. So now we've got some color and some glow going through it. The final thing that we can do over here is we create another new adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called noise. And so what we wanna do is we wanna maybe add around 10% noise and that will just kind of tie it all together. And yeah, that's about it. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to create a real cool digital background using Mi3. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.